In the small town of Santa Cecilia, there lived a boy named Miguel Rivera. His house was full of family, including his great-grandmother, Mama Coco. Every year on Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, his family shared the memories of relatives who had passed on. Miguel's abuelita would tell the story of his great-great-grandmother, Mama Imelda, whose heart had been broken by her musician husband. Because of him, there was one rule in the Rivera household. No music. But Miguel loved music. In his secret hideout, he learned to play guitar by watching videos of his favorite musician, Ernesto de la Cruz. Feeling inspired and brave, Miguel and his dog, Dante, snuck out of the house to perform in a local talent show. But on the way out, Dante jumped onto the family ofrenda, or altar. Mama Imelda's photo tumbled down with a crash. That was when Miguel made a discovery. Mama Imelda's husband was holding a guitar, and it looked very familiar. Mama Coco's papa was Ernesto de la Cruz, Miguel cried. I'm going to be a musician. But because of their family role, his abuelita took his guitar and destroyed it. Smash! Miguel ran as fast as he could to Ernesto's tomb, where the famous guitar still hung. Taking it off the wall, he said, Please don't be mad. I need this to be a musician like you and he gave the legend's guitar a strum. All of a sudden, Miguel noticed all the skeletons. They had followed the path of marigold petals to visit their living relatives for Dia de los Muertos. To return to the land of the living, Miguel would need a blessing from one of his dead family members. So he and Dante crossed the Marigold Bridge into the land of the dead. Miguel found Mama Imelda, but she said she wouldn't give him her blessing if he wanted to be a musician. Miguel had to find another way. So he teamed up with a skeleton named Hector, who said he knew Ernesto de la Cruz. With some shoe polish, Hector made Miguel look like a skeleton. They traveled all over looking for Ernesto. They even performed together in a talent show. But Miguel was running out of time. If he didn't get Ernesto's blessing soon, he'd turn into a real skeleton and never get home. So he ditched Hector to find his great-great-grandpa on his own. Miguel snuck into Ernesto's fiesta at the tippy top of a tall tower. But the place was so crowded, Miguel couldn't get to Ernesto. So Miguel belted out a song. Everyone watched as he sang and fell into Ernesto's pool. Splash! The skeleton saw that he was a living boy. Ernesto was overjoyed. I have a great-great-grandson. But then Hector appeared, and as the two men argued, Miguel learned the dark truth. His great-great-grandpa had poisoned Hector and stolen his songs to become famous. Miguel was shocked to see Ernesto's face turn cold. Ernesto explained that he couldn't risk letting the world know the truth. Then he threw Miguel and Hector down, down, down into a dark pit. Hector told Miguel that the songs he'd written were all for his family. And there was a special lullaby he would always sing for his daughter, Coco. Remember me. Miguel thought of Mama Imelda's photo and the unidentified man. It's you. Hector, you are my great-great-grandpa.
Suddenly, Mama Imelda and Dante came to their rescue. But Hector began to disappear. His daughter was starting to forget him. Mama Imelda and Hector sent Miguel home with their blessing. Back in the land of the living, Miguel rushed to Mama Coco. He sang Remember Me to remind her of her papa. She typically didn't talk much, so Miguel was thrilled when she began to sing along. Mama Coco kept her papa's memory alive by sharing stories of him with her relatives. At last, the Riveras realized that music could bring them closer together. And now Miguel knew he could follow his dream and become a musician with his family's support. Miguel Rivera was excited to go to school. His teacher had promised to tell the kids about a special project they were going to make. He could hardly wait. Good morning, class, said Senora Sena, Miguel's teacher. Today we will be doing a paper mache project. Miguel was thrilled. Oh, yay! We're going to make piñatas. No, not piñatas, she said. For our special project, we'll be making... Alebrijes. Ale what? One of the students asked. Alebrijes. They're colorful sculptures of fantastical creatures, said Senora Sena. Alebrijes were invented about 100 years ago. They are a combination of ancient and modern Mexican art forms. How did they get that name? Miguel asked. The word alebrije came to an artist in a dream, his teacher answered. That's why there is something magical about them. To start the project, you must be inspired, Senora Sena said. Your inspiration will come from animals that live here in Santa Cecilia. Go exploring and make a list of eight of your favorite animals. Eight, Miguel said. That's a lot. You don't have to make eight alebrijes, Miguel. It's okay to make just a few or even one. And the sculptures can be of a particular animal or a combination. Making a list of animals will inspire you to use your imagination. Now that Miguel understood, he was excited to get started. After school, he went to his favorite place, Mariachi Plaza, to look for animals. Right away, he saw pigeons gathered around a fountain. Oh, this is going to be so easy, said Miguel. Pigeon, animal numero uno. Out of the corner of his eye, Miguel spotted a lizard scurrying past. He tried to catch it, but it was too fast. Lizard, animal numero dos, he said. As a band warmed up, the sound of their music caught Miguel's attention. It's Armando and his acoustic armadillos, he said. They are a fantastical group. Armadillo, animal numero tres. Miguel searched the plaza, but he didn't see any more animals. Maybe this is going to be harder than I thought, he said. He sat for a moment, then decided to head home to ask Abuelita for help. When Miguel got home, he told his grandmother about his class project. Abuelita, we're making alebrijes in school, and I need to find five more animals to inspire me. Can you help? Abuelita was excited. Ooh, I love alebrijes. They are as unique as their creators. I'm sure you'll make something beautiful. Vamos, let's find inspiration from our familia. Abuelita pulled out old pictures of the Rivera family that they used every year on Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, for the ofrenda, the family altar. One of the photos showed Mama Imelda with the gray cat. Your great-great-grandmother Imelda loved that cat. She named her Pepita, said Abuelita. Thank you, Abuelita. Cat, animal numero cuatro. 
Do you have a favorite animal? Miguel asked. Abuelita laughed. Yes, I once had a pet goat named Diego. Did you know goats will eat just about anything? He would even eat our laundry. Miguel laughed. Goat, animal numero cinco. What about you, Mama Coco? Miguel asked. His great-grandmother had been listening to them all along. Bonita, she whispered, pointing out the window. Miguel turned and saw a red-tailed hawk in the sky. Wow, I never would have noticed that. Hawk, animal numero seis, he said. Gracias, Mama Coco. Just then, a butterfly landed on the windowsill. Abuelita leaned over and whispered to Miguel. In our country, butterflies, or mariposas, are known as animal guides. And you know what, mijito? It is said that with their migration to Mexico every year, they bring lost spirits home for Dia de los Muertos. That's so cool, abuelita, Miguel said. Butterfly, animal numero siete. Only one more to go. Miguel searched everywhere for one last animal to put on his list. He walked to a quiet area just outside of town. Music is meant to bring people together, he said as he began to play his homemade guitar. Maybe it will help me find my last animal, too. Suddenly, he heard a noise. It was his perro pal, Dante, singing along. How could I forget about you, Dante? Dog. Animal numero ocho. In school the next day, Miguel worked hard on his project. You've got some interesting combinations, said his teacher. How did you choose your alebrijes? I don't feel like I chose them, Senora Sena. In a magical way, it feels like they chose me. At home, Miguel presented his familia with the alebrijes. First, he gave Mama Coco one that resembled the hawk she had spotted. Next, he gave Abuelita one of Diego with a piece of her favorite apron hanging from his mouth. She laughed so hard. She loved it. Finally, Miguel placed the alebrijes of Pepita and Dante next to the ofrenda. He was proud of his creations. Miguel knew in his heart that Mama Imelda would have loved hers. And he also had a feeling she would like Pepita's new friend, Dante. <laughs>